My name's Sky from Butterfly Sky's The Green Scorpion and today we're going to show you how to set up an Australian tarantula in one of our Green Scorpion Design Tarantula Tanks. So I'm going to show you a few different types of enclosures. You can use any kind of plastic container similar to these takeaway containers or a plastic Tupperware container if you like. But today I'm going to show you how to set up one of our um, Green Scorpion designed tarantula tanks. The, our tarantula tanks are really deep so that you can put a lot of substrate in there because most Australian tarantulas are obligate burrowers um, so they will need that extra substrate and they'll need the humidity as well. You also need something that has a glass lid and that limits the airflow so that you can keep a good amount of humidity in the tank. So you need special kind of substrate to go inside your enclosure. So the first thing you need is some coca peat. And they come in bricks similar to this one. Just make sure that you've got an organic brick that doesn't contain any fertilizers, um, just so that this doesn't affect your tarantula. You'll also need some sphagnum moss and they come in bags like this, or they come dehydrated and you can just rehydrate them. Um, this is to help you maintain the humidity inside the tank. So those are the two main things that you'll need. Um, all you need to do to rehydrate the coca peat brick is follow the instructions. Um, then we recommend sterilizing it. Um, I do this by putting it in the microwave. So put it in small batches in the microwave for about 10 minutes or until it's too hot to touch. This will um, get rid of any kinds of parasites or bacteria that are inside the brick that you can't see that could affect your tarantula. Um, make sure that it's cooled completely before you put it inside your enclosure. Um, and now I'm going to show you the consistency that the coca peat should be before you put it in the enclosure. So here we've rehydrated one brick of the coca peat brick. Um, you can see we've sterilized it as well, so it's still a little bit warm. Um, the consistency that you want is so that if you squeeze it, it still is wet, but see it's still got a little bit of water coming out, that's a little bit too wet. So what's in my hand now after I've squeezed the water out, that's the perfect consistency because it's still got enough moisture in there, but it's not dripping wet. And now it's ready to go inside the enclosure. So we've put our coca peat inside the enclosure. It's still a little bit warm, so we'd wait for this to cool down completely before we add our tarantula. Um, just push it down so that it's fairly firm. You wanna put as much substrate in there as you can, um, but just keep in mind that you don't want the tarantula to be able to touch the substrate and the lid at the same time because they can actually push the lid to get out. Um, so we've got about 25 centimeters in there push it down because um, if the tarantula wants to dig a burrow then that will make it a lot easier for it to dig. If you don't want it to dig a burrow um, we suggest putting in half a pot plant or some other kind of hide so that they can just hide in there. These tanks are actually designed though so that your tarantula will feel safe and secure and it might not need to burrow. So I've got about five of these in my office and all of the tarantulas that are on the inside choose not to make a burrow just because it's such an enclosed space and that's a lot better for the tarantulas. Um, now we're going to add our sphagnum moss just a little bit in one of the corners that'll help with the humidity and you can also put any decorations in there if you like. You've just got a plastic plant or maybe a cactus. Um, any kind of aquarium decoration is suitable as well. Um, and then once this cools down, we'll add our tarantula into there. Um, but now what we'll do is we'll go through how to feed your tarantula. So we have a few different options when you're feeding your tarantula. Um, we have mealworms. Um, I wouldn't normally recommend the mealworms though because they can burrow inside the enclosure if your tarantula is not big enough and they're not as high in nutrition as some of the other things that we've got. Um, we've also got silkworms which are really high in protein for them so they're very good um, and we've also got crickets in the container. So normally I would feed my tarantulas crickets um, just because a exercises them a little bit and it also provides a good source of nutrition and there's something that's really easy to get all year round. Um, definitely don't feed them any raw meat or any kind of mice because you're introducing bacteria into your tank. 
Now remember tarantulas are hunters so they'll actually hunt for their food so you don't really need to make it that easy for them just chuck the food into the tank. Um, however if they don't eat the food after 24 hours make sure you remove it from the tank or if they half eat the food remove the half eaten food from the tank after 24 hours. Um, just because your tarantula might be molting it might not be hungry um, or it might be a little bit too cold for it to eat and especially the crickets can be a little bit vicious so they can actually attack your tarantula so definitely remove the food after 24 hours. So now we're going to talk about heating for your tarantula. Um, I prefer to use a heat light, like a red light similar to this one, um, and you can just use a normal desk lamp. Make sure that it's at least 15 to 20 centimetres away from the tank. The tarantulas can't actually see the red colour, um, but it'll provide them with heat. If you're choosing to use a heat cord or a heat mat, make sure you put it on the side of the enclosure, not on the bottom of the enclosure, because if you can imagine in the environment, if it gets too hot, Hot, what the tarantula do will it will dig down into the enclosure um, to find somewhere that's nice and cool and if it's doing that and your heat mats underneath it's actually digging its way um, to towards the heat so that'll affect the tarantula and eventually it'll overheat and die. Um, during the summer months in Australia normally we won't need to heat our tarantulas at all. We want them to be between about 20 um, and 25 degrees is the optimum temperature for them um, but during winter sometimes you will need to heat them especially if it's getting cold at night time in your area. So inside your tarantula tank you want the humidity to be around 50 to 80 percent depending if you've got an arid species or a rainforest species. Um, your glass lid and your substrate will normally keep it around that. Um, I like to add a little tiny water bowl with some gravel on the inside um, and then just put the water. Definitely don't use a sponge or cotton wool because that can house bacteria that will affect your spider. You've just got a little tiny water bowl in there. Um, you can just put it in the front, just keep it topped up and change it every couple of days just to make sure that there's no bacteria in there but the, the stones actually stop the tarantula from drowning on the inside. 